Hi everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters. Well, welcome to part two of building the Ryefield Models 135th scale Panther G Late with full interior. Now this is the limited edition kit that is coming out early that has the clear uh, hull as well as the clear turret. Now part one came out probably about, um, at the time I'm filming this right now, it's only one video ago, but we might slip another video of something else in between. So look back maybe a video or two and you'll find part one on this. And this will explain how we assemble the turret plus most of the lower hull on this kit. So it's uh, quite a fascinating and just incredible kit. Uh, it's been going fairly well uh, with all the parts and there are lots of parts. In fact, when you get an instruction book, it is a true instruction book. 52 pages in all. In fact, it's bigger than some of the uh, reference books I have on the, on the wall over there. So it's pr pretty cool. So been having a lot of fun doing it it's really cool to see all the internal parts of the of the panther and we want to get uh, get this out in a timely fashion because right back of me over here you guys might see the white tacom box it's the 35th scale tacom panther mid a with a full interior so lots and lots of parts guys <laughs> in fact I think if I'm not mistaken there's probably about 1100 parts in this I have, I've yet to find anything on the box anywhere but just going by the sprues there, most of the sprues go up to 100 or at least 70, 80 type, type thing, and there's 12 sprues inside. So, yeah, lots and lots of parts. But we're having fun doing it, so it's, it's going to look great once we're done as well. So, enough of me talking. Uh, let's get started on it. Okay, right now I'm in the process of gluing up one of the last ammunition stowage bins that fit on the floor. And there is a total of six of them all together. And now I haven't put any of the tops on yet. And you can see all of them are assembled right here. And the reason we haven't put the tops on them yet is because you have to put ammunition inside of them. So what I thought I would do is paint up most of them on the sprue here and we've sprayed these with uh, to me is TS 14 gloss black and then we're gonna spray all of the cases with uh, Vallejo's it's kind of a brass gold color and I think it looks really good for that and then we'll go up and put the decals and touch up all that but that's something we're gonna do you know later on because these will be able to put right inside and then we can glue the tops on now what I'm gonna show you on this is so now that you have all of these stowage bins these all need to fit with these little corresponding little pieces underneath here and they'll fit all right into place and I'm just gonna lay this one down just to kind of show you how that one goes and that will correspond to the floor that we already painted with the red oxide and basically all four all the bins all around are gonna the floor is gonna rest right on top like this so it'll it'll help stabilize the floor. Now all of these stowage bins as well as all of these little bulkhead pieces that are going to go on the side here as well as some of these other pieces all of this stuff right here is going to get painted the off-white and that'll make a nice contrast to the red oxide primer floor that we have in here. So once we get all of that in we will paint these white glue them into place then we can place the floor in and then we can put back into our uh, Remember I told you earlier I did not glue any of this into place. So this can all, the uh, the drive mechanism from the transmission to the engine and the part that goes up to the turret and then some of the framework that goes in there as well. So that's all can be glued in at another time. So we're going to paint those right now. Then we'll paint these and we might put a few of them in just to kind of show how it is but the majority of them on the side we might leave out just because it's going to block a lot of the vi um, vision going in there because don't forget we do have the clear side here as well so we'll put a few in and we'll leave a few out you know other than the racks themselves so I'm going to go ahead and start painting this stuff and we'll come back and show you what it looks like once it's installed now I showed you those uh, those stowage bins for the ammunition that I'm going to paint up the white. And the white we're going to use is AK's uh, Off-White from their Real Color lines. I think it looks really good as a uh, Panzer interior color. But since we're going to do that and set up the airbrush to do all that stuff, we might as well go ahead and paint a bunch of these other parts. Now here we have the firewall that is going to go between the engine and the fighting compartment. So we're going to paint that white both sides. We're also going to do this brace that goes across the top. It's kind of like a little bit of a bulkhead for the inside. This gets painted white on both sides. We also, I've just started to paint 
or excuse me, mask off the interior portion of this kit. All of these uh, spots insides are going to get painted white, as well as part of the inside of the hull here. And we don't need to go all the way down, don't forget, because this is going to cover, I'd say, about halfway down. So anything past that, you're not going to see anyway, so it can remain the gray that we already painted. We do want to take extra um, special care not to get any of the white on any of these pieces in here. So like I said, I just started doing it, and before I finish, I just decided I'd let you guys know what I'm doing with all this. So we'll cut all this up a little bit make sure that we don't get anywhere we don't want it. Now also, I'm going to show you this picture as well. We're also going to go and find all of these pieces inside here as well. These uh, parts that surround the engine, the white ones at least, and we're going to make sure those all get painted white all at one time as well. That way it's, it's just going to save us a little bit of time and effort rather than have to keep sending up the airbrush for white as well as this little bin right here and just some other little tiny parts. I've kind of found a whole bunch of them all at once that we'll just put on the painting table one time and get them all painted up. I went ahead and painted all of the uh, the pieces white that I had talked about earlier, all the little bins, and we have to do a little bit more touch up on that. But and when I was starting to dry fit all of these pieces, I noticed that I had glued the top of the sponsons on upside down. So I had to break that portion apart and you know sand it, reapply it, and most of this stuff is going to get hidden anyway, so we don't have to worry too much about that. But we do have to go back now and repaint all of this white since the, the bottoms are all white on that. So we're going to take care of that, and then I will put in all the bins and show you what it looks like. Okay, I got my big mistake all fixed up here, and now we're going to start attaching the, the bins like I had originally had told you. And if hopefully you notice down in here there's these little holes that are going to correspond to the other side of the, the bin rack here. And those will all just plug right into place here. Now there's four of them obviously that go around the floorboard here and hopefully, hopefully we're gonna get all of them to line up just right that this floor is gonna drop right in. What I'm gonna do is try to do them all at once. So if there is any wiggling or anything that we have to mess around with, we will still, the glue will not be dry yet at that point. So I'm gonna go ahead and put those in and give it a try. Well, I started to do that, and then I came up with an actually, I think, a better idea. What I'm going to do is I'm going to end up just sliding all of these and gluing them into place right into the floor. So that way we can just drop the whole floor pan right in as it's designed to, you know, should fit perfectly. Because we already know it fits in there, and all these other pieces are inside of it. So, and if the foot is off slightly on the bottom, that really won't matter because you won't see it anyway. So. We're going to try it one more time, and this time we're going to try it this way, and I'll come back and show you what it looks like once I get them all on. Well, that worked out perfectly, putting the bins in place before putting in the floor like that. Now, you'll have also noticed I've started to install some of the shells that go in here. Now, these little, these little brackets right here are just, they're not painted or anything. I just put them in here to keep the shells in the pr uh, proper position. We're going to take those off. Actually, I think they probably are set up by now, too. So we'll take those off and paint them separately. But I wanted the shells all to line up right. You don't want one falling over, and then you go to try to put that piece on, and it doesn't line up. Now, with those shells right there, these are mainly going to get covered over by this bracing that we've built up right here, and that fits right on there. And I was dry fitting this a minute ago, and because I was telling you the, the side walls were a little, little bit tight, you have to just slightly flex the sides and then we can get this to pop right in and now there's more stuff I need to put on top of this too but uh, just to kind of show you the thing is you can have to work a little bit on the inside here because there's a lot of little pieces to try to work it around and I noticed that if you just play with it a little bit eventually the whole thing just kind of yep there it goes clicks into place so once it gets around and everything but like I said I still have to put a lot of other stuff on this back wall here so we'll pop that back out again and probably don't even want to do that until we actually get the the engine built up but as you can see we're getting quite a bit of it to come along right here and when we install the the clear top I think that's gonna look pretty pretty nice that we're gonna be able to see all of that stuff inside there very nicely and then of course the uh, the turret's gonna lay on top of there too. So a lot of even that stuff is gonna get get hidden. I mean I know we know it's in there. And there's also another uh, the drive shaft coming from the engine to this uh, center hub here. The going forward that has to get put in as well. So 
since uh, we have that done, I think it's probably about time. Well, A, we're gonna finish this off first, this, this firewall. Definitely put all the parts onto that. There's also some like um, kits and there's also more shells I have to put inside here. But I'm gonna take care of all of that. And then with all of, once we get all of the pieces on here, I think we can go ahead and start working on the back end of the, the build, meaning the, uh, the radiators, the engine, the fuel tanks, all of that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna get this one glued into place, finish that up and we'll come back and show you what it looks like before we start the engine. Uh, I also should point out too that in the back here where all the radiators, the fuel tanks and all that stuff goes, we're going to be painting them red oxide primer. And the red oxide primer that we're using is to me is new fine surface primer. It's their new red oxide that has just come out. And, and honestly, it does such a beautiful job. You don't have to set up your airbrush or anything. Just take the parts, you know, put them on masking tape, take them outside, because this stuff is lacquer and a little strong smelling, but dries very, very fast and it's a very hard, durable surface. So it's great for a project like this, especially because constantly having to set up the airbrush for so many other different things, if you can get away with it, definitely try to find this stuff. And now we have a few shells in there and now we're gonna try to get all of this parts in here. Now we have all these other red oxide parts painted. Remember I told you, you have to stretch the hole ever so slightly to get this to pop down. Snaps in and making sure everything fits properly the way it's supposed to. I think we've got it pretty well lined up. So we can go ahead and glue that in. And we can also glue our drive shaft that goes through the bottom now that we have that wall in there and that can be placed in without the engine I was noticing. So we'll go ahead and glue that in right now. Before we start building the engine, I was uh, playing around with the uh, the clear top and I thought I would kind of show you guys too what we're what I'm looking at here and how cool the whole thing looks all the way around. So we just dry fit this into place here as you can see and the detail just looks incredible on this kit. And with this portion on, we can also decide, like the turret where we painted part of it with the dark yellow to kind of frame it, we can also do a similar thing right here. We could we could either leave like this back, since there's not really much going behind this other than the red oxide, we could actually paint this portion of it with the camouflage color. We can even do a little bit up the sides and even in this portion and leaving the top like that. Then we have uh, this hatch right, the hatch area that will leave a lot of visibility going through. And this is another option that we have with the front. Let you guys see, there. obviously there's clear plastic on right there. We can leave that part clear. We could, if, if everything works out, which I think it will, we can actually camouflage this piece of it, slide this into place, so that if you want to say, hey, let's have uh, the front of it look like it's uh, you know, camouflage, but then we can pull this off to reveal the inside workings of it. That might also work out pretty well. And then of course, finally, we'll have the, the turret that'll slide right into place here. And as you can see, we have a, a pretty cool looking, even without the engine in it, it's just a cool looking display model. Also point out too, I went ahead and glued all of the uh, uh, arms, suspension arms into place at hopefully the correct uh, the way, based on the instructions, I think they will be. And then we can start painting up the wheels, but we're gonna obviously have to paint all of that at once. And once I decide how I'm gonna paint this, we'll do that all at once to uh, do the camouflage. And of course, if we do any camouflage on that, we're gonna go back and camouflage the top up here too, very carefully, trying not to get any of it on the clear parts. So let's go back and start working on the engine. I was just reading the comments on episode one of building this vehicle, and a few of you are asking for the old days when we would have some high-speed uh, building with a little classical music. So for the engine portion of this build, that's what you're gonna get.
okay, we have the, the engine primarily put together right here. Have to do a little cleanup here and there, some minor stuff like that. But what we're gonna probably do is just paint this uh, generally over your arm. I'm not gonna go super much detailing on this. And, and that is primarily from building the King Tiger with the full interior that I did last year. All of this is going to get basically be invisible and then once we put this top piece on that is about the only thing you'll see in a little bit of the back here so not going to go super crazy getting all those parts in there I also think it's going to make it a little bit more difficult even to fit inside here I was dry fitting it a minute ago and it was very very tight fit but it did go in so what we'll do is we're going to paint this portion gets painted white and this will get like a like a uh, like a metallic gray color I think was what will best put it down like I said very little of it's gonna get seen though so I've gone ahead and actually changed my mind and I painted the uh, the entire engine block uh, a NATO black color and we're just gonna use a little bit of our S&J polishing powder just lightly with a brush and we're just gonna highlight some of this stuff in here uh, studying a little bit further ahead and you can see how this makes all this kind of stuff pop right out so let me we'll finish that up in a few minutes here but what we have are a few other pieces that we need to put in here so we've got this rear portion right here that we've painted up that'll pop right in after we get the engine of course we've also painted the inside which I just got silver powder on on that but only that much of it is going to get seen and then we've also built up the back of the uh, the tank which this, once that gets, once we get the engine inside, we'll be able to slide this right into place. You hear how that clicks right in there. And we'll have the whole back assembled with the engine. And then, of course, this will get dropped on top of the engine like we were talking about. I think I've kind of determined, too, looking at the upper hull, I think what we'll do is we'll probably just draw a line here and then do a little on the base and actually just paint in all of this stuff. These top panels are not clear. Uh, for the engine as well as the radiator so we'll have to try if we want to see one of them we're gonna have to open one of them up all of this is is not clear plastic so I think it'll look good if we just paint this whole back in the dark yellow or the camouflage color whatever we choose to do on that and then we can have some of the uh, the hatches open so we can see what little bit of the engine you can see on it I was also noticing too, as you see right here, this part they did give you as a clear piece this is where the driver and the radio operators hatch are and that will that'll pop right into place here. Probably will leave this clear because we I do want to be able to see as much as possible in there. What I find amazing too is that uh, if you had a problem with the transmission on this Panther kit, or the real not the kit the real model, that they would have to disassemble all of this inside here and remove the transmission through this hatch. Uh, that would be a lot, a lot of work because it's not a very, very big opening right here. And just think about all of that work to take out all those parts inside there. So quite a bit. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to finish this up right here. We're going to, like I said, highlight all these different pieces. And you can see how that comes out because you're going to barely see any of this stuff once we get it inside there. And we're going to glue all that in and we're going to come back and show you what it looks like when it's done. I thought I would show you guys the engine going in here and I was telling you it was a little tight and it's just when we're getting over that initial part once you get it down to a certain level it does click in the rest of the way down here I just don't want to break anything off so we're not pushing too too hard on it and then we pop this piece in I'm gonna align it a little bit better once we once we figure all that and then there's also some more uh, cabling that goes around here so I've gone ahead and weathered up the engine a little bit. We used a little bit of streaking grime, some gray color streaking grime on the white parts of the engine to make them pop. We used a little bit of like oil staining in there as well as a little bit of our metallic powder just to kind of make things pop out a little bit. You'll also notice, hopefully you can see it pretty well, we went and plumbed the inside of the rest of the engine compartment. All the little pipes coming out of the radiators, they're pretty hard to see but, they're, but they are inside there as well as the big pipe that goes all the way on the outside. Now we were... I've been, I know I've been going back and forth about how we're going to display this, so come up with an idea that I think we're going to do on this one. Now these are the radiator grills with the photo etch inside. Those are just placed in there temporarily right now. Because the hatch is so small for the engine compartment, that if we put that on, even if we open the engine compartment, 
I, I really think it doesn't do it enough justice to show off all the parts that we spent all that time building. And although we didn't super detail them because they're all buried inside there, it does look like a nice little piece that we want to have shown off. So what I decided to do is I built this whole portion up right here. You've got your rear engine deck as well as the uh, the heater because the heating plumbing is on this one right here. And what we do is we'll put this on and we won't actually glue it into place. We will pop this in, we will paint it to match the rest of the camouflage. And what we'll do in that is then if, when you want to show off the engine, you'll just be able to pick this up and pop it right off and show it off on there. And then I was looking through the, the Panther book and I think I've come up with an idea about the way that we can do ours. Now this is obviously a picture of a real tank that they just drew the line. Now they did cutouts, but I think we might do this as well. I can leave just a portion of the, uh, the fender on here. We can still show some tracks, but still have these openings inside the side of the vehicle that you'll be able to see inside of it. So I think that might be the way we uh, end up going ahead and doing that. So now, because we are working on the uh, the top panel here, we go pop these out temporarily now so we don't lose them. I've got all the little pieces like the the radios, things like that. They're going to get mounted up inside here. We also have the machine gun for the front and all the different rings. So. We will not only have that, we will have the front plate painted camouflage and then we'll be able to pop that off and we'll have the clear point so you'll be able to see the, you know, all the transmission and things inside of it. So I think we've, we've got quite a bit of you know, building and little painting things to go ahead of us here. But I am going to start on the, probably the dark yellow portion of it right now and at least you know, map this out, draw the line here, draw the line here, here, and here, just so you'll be able to look through the side view, side view. And I took some of the shells out of here too. I noticed that if we leave any of them in, it, it doesn't make any sense at all to have them in there because you can't see past any of them. So I, so I just left one on the bottom of each one of those right there. And I think that, at least people know, that's where the shells go, but you can still see inside the vehicle. Well, here's what it looks like with the uh, the first test of the uh, the line on there and the back the way it's doing. And don't forget, this is not glued down into place. But I want to give you guys just a quick show you how it was going to line up. Now I have to I'll have to actually make this line a little bit wider or this one a little bit wider. But I think I like the way it really looks because you get to see all of the different pieces on it and still cover this up. And this is what I meant by the front when we can actually go ahead and pull this front plate off and we still have a clear part right here so we can still show off the inside of our vehicle really well. Okay, now that we have the dark yellow on and we like the way that looks, we're going to go over it with XF68 and XF67, NATO brown and NATO green, and do our camouflage. And we just masked off the area just so we don't get any overspray on any of the clear parts that we worked hard to keep clean. So I've gone ahead and painted up the camouflage, as you can see on there. We've also painted up the road wheels in multiple colors and did the black on those and installed those as well. And we've also painted up the glasses plate and we installed the fenders. Now putting on the fenders was a little bit of a, a little bit of a pain because there's a little bit of a, uh, a nub right here that lines up in here. But don't forget, we can't glue it to that because we want to be able to remove this front plate. So getting that all lining up, but a little bit of work and you can get it on there. Now I've run into one other problem for the way that I planned on showing off my vehicle. And let me show you what I'm talking about here. First, we install this and the plate fits pr pretty good on there. Kind of, you can kind of hear a click when it goes into place there. So we've got a nice, nice display piece. The problem is, Getting this in, and well, I show what I should say is I wanted to glue this uh, this upper part of the hull down so we get a nice um, firm fit. The only problem is with the with the vision port as well as this uh, barrel lock, I can't slide this in anymore. So what we have to do is we have to leave this separate, and then if you want to put this on, you're gonna have to just click it into place there and then slide them both in at the same time but I do want the ability to have it shown both ways so the only difference is back here you can see once it there it goes it locks in so if we if we glue it in we can get a nice firm tight fit on it right there if not it's just gonna have a little bit of a gap and that's just because the thing is still loose on it so I think we'll have to live with that I'm, I'm not too too concerned with the way that looks and then kind of show you what it looks like once we put the, the turret in 
It's uh, quite a quite a cool little piece right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to do like uh, a little bit of flat coat on this to blend all this together, maybe do a little bit of weathering on it. Not too sure how much we wanna do on that just because there it's, uh, it's only gonna be in that area. I don't wanna put any dull coat on any of these areas. I don't wanna risk getting any of it on the clear parts at all. But overall, it's coming out pretty good. So I'm going to finish up that stuff and we'll come back and show you what it looks like. One other thing I should tell you, a little bit of a funny story. I was working on all of the little tiny parts that go onto this vehicle and I started having problems seeing. And I ended up with, turns out, with a optical migraine where you get these uh, kind of like flashing zigzag lights off in there and you basically lose your vision. Now I wear glasses and with or without the glasses it was on it and even when you close your eyes you can see it. And it was from straining my eyes I believe so much on all the little parts but I uh, never ever had one of those in my entire life and it kind of scared me a little bit that my vision just suddenly went away like that. But lasted about 20 minutes and it came back but just keep that in mind not to do too much all at once because you can have a you know kind of mess with your eyes a little bit well here we are here is our completed model or I should say mostly completed in the sense that as you can see we've left off all of the tools and the clamps all that kind of stuff on the side of the vehicle here and that's mainly because if we put that on it kind of defeats the whole purpose of having the clear sides because you can't see inside anymore. Now when it came to the tracks, I just used a set of Fruel model tracks just like we did with the uh, the Ming Panther. Kind of give you a little 360 around the entire vehicle here too. Now obviously you're going to see gaps and things like this and that is mainly because I did not attach any of this stuff on it here. And what I mean by that is we'll take this apart and show you what I'm talking about. First, the, uh, the turret obviously comes out. And then we can go ahead and carefully... It's kind of a tight fit up here. I don't want to yank and break anything off. Pull this off, and we can remove the, the glasses plate. And we can put that back in like that if we want to show off transmission. zoom in a little bit for you there give you a little bit of an overhead now with the uh, the glass slid in here without the front on and when we get back to the engine here there's two ways we can display it I've left this as one big piece like you saw earlier and this way at least you get to see most of the engine and this is not all the way in obviously and that was my biggest problem as we were talking earlier that I wanted to glue this down to get this to be you know all lined up and nice and tight but with that then you can never get this clear plate or this plate over the clear plate because of the uh, the, the uh, travel lock as well as one of the vision ports on it there but I think this shows it off good enough and then of course we have the complete option of pulling this off completely and showing the inside of the vehicle and I did do a little bit of weathering inside. Didn't want to go too, too crazy on it because as soon as you put this on, a lot of it starts to hide in the shadows. But it is pretty amazing to, uh, to see up close how tight the, uh, the quarters are inside of this vehicle. Now, the reason I went ahead and used the Fruel model tracks is these have individual tracks that have the little pins that go inside. And I was all set to use those, except the pins don't actually make the track work at all. You still have to glue it together, and it's, it's a nice little detail feature, but it seemed like a lot of work. And honestly, I prefer the metal tracks over any of those other type of tracks. So, And after I actually noticing this right here, how we painted this side, because of this fender right here, I think I might even later on go back and paint this portion underneath the fender you know camouflage color as well too because it looks like it'll blend in pretty well and you're not really going to notice anything right there because that fender kind of kind of blocks any view you would have so so overall the, the like i said the kit a lot a lot of parts probably probably close to about 1200 parts the fit was pretty good did have a little bit of problem with the photo etch for the uh the floor supports but we worked over that everything else seemed to work pretty well 
I also decided not to do any weathering on the outside of the vehicle. That was for a couple reasons. First of all, the whole purpose of building a kit like this is to show off the internal parts of it. And doing any weathering on it kind of takes away from the actual, I think, the insides. Plus, also trying to weather around all the clear parts. You know, you have to mask off little pieces here and there. And I just thought that would be really, really difficult and end up messing up any of our clear parts. You'll also notice, too, on the back here, this uh, little staples hanging out of the back here. When I build my frule tracks, I like to leave that one pin in there that's easily removable. So if we want to take the tracks off, that little one is still in L shape that we can pop right off. So overall, like I said, it was a lot of fun, a lot, a lot of work building this kit up, but uh, very much enjoyed it. And I want to thank you guys as always for watching and please stay tuned because we have many more videos coming including we're going to start on the TACOM Panther A with the full interior. So that one should be coming up very, very soon. So thanks for watching.